Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching. In this video, I've got updates on Project Workspace. That's right, San Diego just dropped in late February, early March, and Project Workspace was one thing that I was really excited about, right? A new place to manage our projects. Well, they dropped a new one May 5th, and so in this video, I'm gonna give you a tour of what those new features are. Here's the uh, store version of it. So major release for Project Workspace 2.0.1, and there's the features, you can see them, but we're gonna run through them in this video. So let's hop over to the Project Workspace. Um, we'll go to our workspace, and I'm gonna go to the homepage. Um, in the homepage, I don't have any projects assigned to me, so you can see here I've got a toggle between projects and all projects, that's not new. What is new is this new sub-project button here. So now, without having to go into a project to find my sub-projects, I can jump directly to them. So see me toggle back and forth there between projects and sub-projects. So that's feature number one that's new. If we hop into a project, we got contingent worker onboarding. This actually had a sub-project, so I'll show you how you can toggle back and forth between your um, sub-projects and projects within the actual planning console here. Um, the new the new planning console and project workspace. So if you hit the settings button and go to general, now we can actually get to the sub projects for our project that we're looking at. So we had a contender worker onboarding project, but a sub project was offboarding. So I just toggle that switch and I will move into the sub project for that particular project. Now while this is loading up, um, one of the new features for uh, this release also is being able to manage greater than 10,000 tasks within the pro pro project workspace or planning console. I don't have a project with that many tasks. I'm gonna take ServiceNow's word for it. I'm sure there's a use case out there where somebody has that many project tasks, um, but uh, I, I don't have that. In, uh, another thing that's new is this uh, classic planning console link was enhanced. So now, instead of being brought to the uh, analytics page in the planning console, we can jump directly to the page we we're looking for. So if we were wanting to do a status report, we can click on that and it'll take us directly to the project status report in the classic planning console. Now I'm not on the product team, but I imagine all this stuff is gonna get rolled into the new project workspace at some point, um, but they've made it easier to navigate between the new functionality, the new workspace, and the legacy existing functionality that hasn't been migrated over yet. So there you see my status report for that particular project. So coming back here, another thing that's new is uh, in the settings where there's some advanced settings now. So you can do things like toggle autosave on and off at a user level. If the project um, hasn't met certain criteria, you can turn it on from automatic calculation to manual calculation. And then of course, like many of our workspaces and um, preferences, we can set whether we see a date or a date and time. So if I was to click this um, with my button and not my pointer, uh, we should be able to see the, uh, once I apply this, the dates switch from dates, just dates, to actually dates and times, depending on what the preference is there. So there, they all updated. Um, the next thing that's new um, that I wanna show is actually the adding and uh, indenting tasks. So um, let me turn off the baselines here for a second. I'm gonna show that in a minute. Um, but, so when you're clicking on a task here in the work breakdown structure, let's move this over a bit so it's not behind my head. Um, if I click on a task here, maybe we're develop software, right? Notice these two new buttons that show up on the Gantt chart. So I can take that, I can indent this task using this button, or I can create a new task below it using that button. So let's look at that. There's an indentation, and you see it moved it over here under the Procure Hardware task. Um, so that was the indentation happening. And if I wanted to come in and unindent that, I do need to come over here to do that. So I can unindent that. There's no unindent button over here on the left hand side um, but uh, you do have that ability there and we can add a task below using that feature and then go put it in our new task uh, we'll just call this new task demo so that's another new feature adding these buttons on the gantt charts so that we can have quick access to those when we need them next new feature has to do with baselining so this was interesting um, you may have baselines on your project you can establish those and when you move something whether that's um, scheduling or even financial stuff um, ServiceNow is keeping track of what that value was and what the new value is. So we can now track um, what that looks like on the project workspace. So I'll call your attention to um, these little pictures here, right? So you've got a gray bar indicating this is where the baseline was and then this is where it actually is. So it used to be 
the end date was 228 2020 or 2020 but now the end date is 10 1 2020 and i don't know if you can tell what happened here is this guy um this project kickoff meeting got moved from let's see hover over here january 21st all the way out to october 1st and i did that on purpose for the demo but that got moved so we can visually see that but what service now did is they added the ability to add some columns to our work breakdown structure. So let me move my head so you can see here. If I scroll down to the bottom on the right here, you can have up to two baselines now showing in your work breakdown structure, baseline one and baseline two. So if I click the baseline up here at the top of the page, it's this little guy right here. If I click that, you'll see I get an instruction. You can uh, create a new one or you can select up to two. I only have one selected. And then depending on which ones you've selected, that's the ones you can either the one or two you can add to your work breakdown structure. So what's that look like? Let's scroll to the right for the one we were just looking at. And we can see three new things. One is the baseline start date was January 21st. Baseline end date was January 22nd. And our variance is minus 181 days. So we are now 181 days behind schedule based on that baseline that we established there. So that's the new features that I can actually show you. I'm looking over at my other screen. The other one is, um, and you may not have known this, but previously when you were making changes in the planning console or this new project workspace, business rules weren't firing. And one of those is usually notifications. So if a task gets assigned to you, um, you didn't receive a notification for it because of just the system performance. Well, that's changed. Now, if you get a task assigned to you within Project Workspace, the platform and email notifications will be sent out. So I knew this was an issue like five releases ago. I had project managers all up in arms. Um, so hopefully everybody's happy about that fix. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested. Until next time, and it might be very soon based on this schedule, I'll see you on the next one.